This is just a tutorial on how to build sprinkler manifolds based on the uh, Precipmate Sprinkler Tool app. Um, it's uh, an app that I designed so that you can learn how to do sprinklers and uh, have all the information at your fingertips. All right, I'm going to start by assembling a two valve manifold. <clears throat> um, the parts description is in the app and it ha has uh, pictures to be able to show every step of the process and along with explanations on how to do it. All right, so Teflon, I'm going to, I'm going to Teflon these close nipples. Um, and remember when you're Tefloning, wrap away from yourself over the top, flip it over and do it again. Don't wrap from one side to the other or one side will be on backwards and let your Teflon will pull off as you tighten it up. So there's the first piece. The second piece is a union. Now this, this is not the only option. There are other options for being able to do manifolds. I do have a manifold system here that is something that actually is built to be put together rapid or very, very quickly. Um, all the components are here to be able to put it together. But this is the design on the planner app. So that's the reason, or sorry, on the, the, the sprinkler tool app. That is the reason that I am showing this so that it's, it's just a tutorial to be able to, to expand on that. Um, I don't typically use those other uh, sets of manifolds because <clears throat> I have seen in, in um, the past where they have been discontinued or not necessarily discontinued, but, a, but the supplier that you use, will they will be discontinued. So it's hard to find parts. So, you know, 15 years down the road, when you're replacing a valve, you may not be able to, to um, find the component that you need. So these are readily available components because unions have been around for, I mean, as long as I know. So um, that this is why I stick with this very basic design um, or very, uh, yeah, yeah, this old school design is what it really is um, because I, I will always be able to find these parts where at some point these may be discontinued. Okay, so now I just put in another close nipple. Always look to find the arrow. There's, a, there's an arrow. I don't know if you can see that in there. Maybe there's a little arrow sh showing this direction is the, air, the direction of flow. And by the way, the solenoid will always be on the downstream side of the direction of flow. This is the main line side right here. So thread these together. We can do so without cross-threading them. While I'm on video, of course, it's going to cross-thread, right? There it goes. Okay, always, always, always only hand tight, then test. That's one thing that's nice about using unions. If it leaks, you can loosen them up and tighten the component that is loose, that is leaking. Um, you can use, um, oh, see right here, I'm actually going too tight with that one. I'll stop at that point because I don't want it to have problems. So hand tight, maybe a little bit more, but make sure you don't overdo it. You don't want to bury these threads into here because if you do, bury the threads, meaning tighten it up where there's no threads left because you wind up putting a lot of outward pressure on these spots right here. And you don't want to have them crack because they'll split often along these mold lines. And with, uh, this is a commercial valve, so you don't see a mold line. Out. Well, I guess you do see a mold line. It's right there, but these ones don't split as often, but they can. I've seen it happen in, in many cases where you wind up having something split because it's over tightened. So just don't over tighten it. Make sure that it doesn't leak, but um, you know, just, just tighten until you're comfortable. And uh, uh, at that point, if it does leak when you turn it on, you want to loosen these fittings and then tighten the, the, the part that is the problem or take it apart again and re-teflon if you have to. That's one thing that's nice about using unions is you can disassemble the whole thing. So I'm going to show you two different or uh, yeah, two different valves. It would be a drip valve and a, uh, a standard one inch irrigation valve that doesn't have a drip filter on it. Um, one of them is a, this is a home version. This is a commercial version. It's just what I have on hand. So that's what I'm using. Um, all right. So this, sorry, I actually didn't need to do that. This one, this one already has one a nipple glued into it. So you would, yeah, okay. No, I will show you this, this basically what I would normally thread into there. It was already glued. And then I would glue whatever pipe onto the end here or I'm going to continue as if that part right there is not on. Again, I'm using parts that I have on hand. 
Um, when you Teflon, you want to, te or sorry, Teflon, when you, when you prime, you want to prime until the pipe has been thoroughly softened. If you don't prime long enough, then the, the pipe won't be soft and it won't fuse together. You don't, or, I mean, it will, it will fuse, but you may have a weak joint. Um, you know, that's the problem is that if you, if you don't, uh, you're basically supposed to get these, the, um, pipe back to the, the conditions it would have in the laboratory when it's created so that they melt together and become a weld um, instead of just gluing. So now I'm holding it together oh, and I should be using gloves. That's something you should always do, which I'm not doing. So uh, that's why I have purple on me. Um, anyway, there we go. Now it won't come loose. The reason I'm holding, I was holding it is so this would set. All right, there's the first one. Now I'm going to repeat the process with a drip manifold or drip valve um, so that this can be a pair and this one I'm going to show a slightly different version where this would be glued with a toe nipple um, because that is a, occasionally you will have a problem finding the stuff that you need or you may just want to be able to have the flexibility of being able to make this all this the length that you want so you can always change the length of these um, these are just cut toe nipples that I, I use um, ones that were uh, that they're extruded nipples versus um, the molded nipples so that the outside diameter is the same length or sorry same same width as as the pipe so it uh, it glues up really well I have another video about that um, basically showing that if you use the wrong kind of nipple um, there's a good chance that, that you're going to have a little bit of uh, wobbling in the fitting and you could have a leak. Okay, so that's together. Okay, oops, push back. I started pushing back. I didn't hold it long enough. I'm doing a video, so I'm trying to do it quickly and I should not be doing that. So I started with the union. Um, I could have done this, this section first. This is a piece that's already cut. Um, this is going to glue in here and it's going to glue in right there. Um, actually, I don't like that one. It's a little bit too short. So I'm going to cut a new one. Because I don't want it to come up short. Um, if it's too short, we may have a problem with the, um, with the fitting not being buried all the way down to the lip down there. If, if this does not glue all the way down to that fitting down there, uh, or that, that lip down there, there's a good chance that it's not seated well enough to be able to, to get this to, to glue up properly. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one. Sorry, the camera happens to be in the way in this case. That's why I keep moving side to side. Okay. Again, make sure you have enough primer and enough glue. You don't want you want to make sure that you don't um, leave, or you don't, uh, or you want to make sure you use enough ABS cement is what it's called because that that's actually a filler. That's the reason this is thick. You can get some that are not thick and they all work equally well. Um, this just happens to be an easier one uh, for especially um, to be able to <laughs> to make up for some of your mistakes. Uh, just because it has that filler in it. Um, but, I mean, it, all PVC cement um, that is rated for pipe under pressure like this will work. As long as it's rated for um, Schedule 40 PVC or actually Schedule 80. It, as long as it's rated for the right kind of pipe. All right. There we go. So there's that section, which is exactly the same as this section, only it's glued. Okay. Now that's already Teflon. Spin this guy on. It's going to make this this setup a lot longer, which is a little frustrating because it's going to have a hard time fitting the box. You may actually have to get an extra large box for something like this because of how big this is. That is one advantage to using the the manufactured um, manifolds is that you won't have that problem. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tighten this too much because that glue is not quite set. Normally I would give it a little longer before I started twisting on it like that, but again I'm making a video. Okay, this is actually loose, so I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. There we go. So that is almost complete. Now all we have left is sorry, I grabbed the wrong union. 
what we have left is this union right here on the side. Three wraps around, pull it in so that you can see the grooves because that will make it actually, um, it will force the Teflon down into where it needs to be for it to seal. So that's a, that's a, a definitely a good idea. Again, hand tight, ready to go. Let's get this moved over so we can show you. We got two sets just like that. This one that's off camera, but that's the other end. So now I want, what I would do is I'm going to connect the, these together. So I will cut another piece of pipe. That one's sturdy from glue, so I'm going to get another piece. Okay, what I would do to get the, the length here is decide how far apart I want this to be. And then I would measure from this point to this point, um, typically just by holding it over it and putting it right where I want it to be, like that. And I would take this, set it alongside where my finger is. Use ratchet cutters to cut it so it's straight. You can use sawzall, you can use pipe saw, There's quite a few different things that you can use, but um, I, prefer, I prefer ratchet cutters because they are really fast. Okay, Tef or uh, primer. Again, I'm, I'm actually I'm not following my procedure because I again I'm on camera, so I'm in a hurry. Um, I always want to do the pipe first since I started on this. There we go. Now, now they're both wet and they're they're softened. Again, if you're if you rush this part. There is a chance you'll wind up with a leak, so don't rush your glue jobs. Make sure that you're doing a good job when you're when you're doing your glue your your glue or weld jobs. Um, you can see I'm not holding this one. A lot of times when you're doing um, the stuff like this with the the uh, the pipe and the fitting like this versus a nipple, the nipples tend to push out more. So a lot of times you can put them together and you don't get that pushback. As long as you don't get the pushback, you're okay. You want to make sure you hold it long enough that you don't get that pushback where the fitting starts coming apart. Okay. Oh, again, by the way, when you push it together, push it together. And then only adjust as much as you need to as far as twisting. And then just hold it together. A lot of people say you twist it a quarter turn after gluing. That is incorrect. Uh, they, you know, that, that is something that I always taught everybody was twist it a quarter turn after doing the glue job. No, do not twist it if you don't have to. Only twist it to align it up to a quarter turn if that is needed. That manifold is done. Um, in this case, there would be um, pipe that would come out either side and go someplace else. Um, if this is a dead end, right here we would wind up having another piece come out. And we put a 90 on this and a drain of some kind, um, a hand valve. It doesn't matter, anything at all, or even an auto drain. There are auto drains that you can use that will, um, you, you twist them in, and I will make another video about that. You twist them in to a, a half inch fitting and they will, uh, um, they, they'll wind up draining the water out as soon as the pressure drops. So, uh, well, as soon as the pressure drops down, to, I mean, I don't know what the actual PSI is on it, but when it drops down to basically nothing, it'll open up. So that is the basic tutorial on how to do, how to put together a manifold based off of the uh, Precipitate um, tool app, or Precipitate sprinkler tool app. Um, the, uh, the version on iOS is actually named slightly different than the version on Android because the version on Android has not been updated. Uh, the plan is to have that updated this winter. Uh, again, um, I'm the one that actually created it, so um, it's, it all depends on how much time I have to be able to work on it. So that's why it, it's not, not, it has not been updated to be the same as the other app. Uh, please like and share. Um, if you like these videos, um, you know, follow me because uh, if, if, if you don't follow me, there's a good chance you're not going to see my videos. Well, I appreciate it. Have a good day.